Good evening. Tonight we have the latest chapter in the run into the Championship of English football. Two seasons ago, Eric Cantona won it in the white of Leeds United. Last year, of course, it was the red of Manchester United. After his recent ban, the Frenchman returned in splendid form last Saturday. Hughes. Kanchelskis. Away from Brightwell. Cantona waiting. Cantona! Cantona is onside. It's two! Tonight, Cantona faced his old club at Ellen Grove. On Sunday, Blackburn's title hopes were almost crushed by Queen's Park Rangers. Could it be a Rovers' return as real contenders? They had to win at West Ham tonight. We'll have all the other Premiership goals. We feature Rugby League's great star, Ellery Hanley of Leeds. On Saturday, he faces former club Wigan, hot favourites yet again to win the Challenge Cup final. You only can play to the best of your ability on the day, and I think that Wigan are a very talented side and a very tremendous side, so are Leeds, and it'll be a very evenly matched contest, I would imagine. And tonight in snooker, James Watana of Thailand tries to break the British stranglehold in the World Championship. He plays Steve Davis. Well, two points clear and a game in hand, but surprisingly no away win since February the 5th. That's how Manchester United went into their match away to Leeds tonight. And of course, Cantona up against his old team and a hot atmosphere to greet him. The commentator at Ellen Road is Barry Davis. The hero who became the villain in the eyes of Leeds United supporters, but the man who gives Manchester United a certain je ne sais quoi. Both sides are the teams their managers wish to pick, which means that for Leeds, Gordon Strachan is fit to play against his old club. He's had a problem with a calf strain and hasn't started a match since the beginning of the month. And also, Tony DiRigo has shrugged off an Achilles tendon problem. For Manchester United, Paul Ince had a little bit of a workout about an hour ago, running off a bit of stiffness but Alec Ferguson is able to stick with the team which won Saturday's Manchester derby. And on the substitutes bench, he has McClare and Robson. Philip Don, England's World Cup referee, is the man in charge. And it's the 12th meeting between these two sides in three seasons. The previous 11 have produced six draws and five victories for Manchester United. But recent history in league matches between these two at Ellen Road. The matches end in draws. First touch for Cantona, whose bodyguard on the pitch looks as though it's going to be Chris Fairclough. The bodyguard off the pitch, incidentally, is Manchester United's head of security who often travels to away games. Here's Ince, almost turning in on it. Cantona. Getting booed every time he touches the ball. But he would have expected that. And the first free kick is for a challenge on the Frenchman. Dennis Irwin has four players to the right. It's quite a long way out, even for his quality of strike. He does strike it, he struck it very well indeed. But John Lukic would have been extremely disappointed to have been beaten from that range. But he hit it cleanly. Lukic watched it speed away. Dean, Strachan, Kelly makes the forward one, handball by Owen. Strachan.
second to take. In on the near side. It's the header in the end. By the man who made the run with Dean rather than Dean. It's another corner. Good early run by Speed and Dean came in. Roy Keane who got there first. Claimed. Over the head of Ince. Pallister leads hold the line halfway inside their own half. Biggs to Irwin to Cantona. Got in front of uh, his marker then when it mattered. Biggs with the flick. Irwin's cross. Oh, Beckler not there that time, but the header absolutely straight from Cantona. Speed down to the right. Been looking for that. Newsom had taken a good position. Fair tough. Dean. Speed. The ball by Speed. And come the other way. Strachan. Speed coming into the back attack of the match and orchestrated by Gary Speed assisted by Gordon Strachan final header coming from Speed <laughs> Kelly Strachan Given against Hughes. Gordon Strachan yet to be on the winning side against his old club. Dean. I'll play Kelly. A bit of promise here. Not a bad strike either. Striking quick to see the danger. Came back. Good header weather off. Another view of Speed's header. Well claimed. Useful by Owen Cantona. Good stop. And difficult to dispossess. He's so good at getting his body around the ball. Good ball by Dennis Owen. Put it down. In fact, first of all, was by the defender Newsom. Cantona's shot. Strachan. Sun goal increasing as the half comes to an end. Strachan. Bruce. Speed. Canister. Hughes. Good ball by Keane. And he's away now, Giggs. And Chelsea's coming in far side. Oh, and it beat them all. 
Cantona. Keen. Disappointing end from Manchester United's point of view. Keane, who originally found Giggs. Ended up with Keane's shot. Offside against two. Wallace and Dean. Yes, the entertainment has improved in the last few minutes. A chance a minute. Speed, Kelly, Cantona, Strachan. very quiet first of 45 minutes speed perhaps coming nearest with a good attack that he orchestrated from one side to the other and which ended with his header but the impression is that Manchester United are pacing themselves half time score down on road is nil nil still a very mild evening Quite a few in the crowd in shirt sleeves. And so far, a pretty mild match on a poor pitch. His gigs. Didn't get hold of the shot. And also been said of uh, John Lukic. Wallace holding up well. Speed. It's... Roy Keane Andre Konchelskis everything now to his left Hughes Cantona offside for a moment Hughes again play allowed to continue Legion Ali Ball Keen. This was intended for, for uh, Strachan from McAllister. Chelskis. Hughes. Will that work for him? Mark Hughes. Can Chelskis. 1 0 Manchester United. Little smile on his face. And there was a fortuitous moment in that move for Mark Hughes. Kanchelskis, who started it with a diagonal run, then fed back by Mark Hughes and was able to place the ball just where he wanted to. It's quite a long run. Let's see where the ball goes now from Hughes. Lost it there. I don't think that was as intended as it might have looked. And then he looked up, saw Kanchelskis underneath the body of John Lukic and the ninth goal of the season for Kanchelskis. Free kick has been given. Ben would have made a run on the left. Drew a couple of people across. McAllister might fancy his chances. Takes. And he did fancy his chances. Throughout the big day and got across with no problem at all. He'll have to do more to test the Michael than this. It's very obvious what was going to happen. Well up by Pallister. No arm this time from Dean. 
Taken by Wallace, McAllister, won't come down for Leeds United. Speed. Tackled by Giggs and a fair one, said Mr Don. And again, he was ideally a place to see. Wallace, but that's lifted Leeds a little bit. Good advantage played, and Wallace with the cross. Not too close to Schmeichel. Tuskers had to come back quite a long way for it. Did touch it, I think, but it didn't matter anyway because it had been put there by Schmeichel. That's a free kick. Stratton can take. And the crowd now joining their side in making a challenge. It's been a long time in coming. And the 24th minute of the second half. Strachan, struck well, Dean at the back, and had an extra player at the back too, John Newsom. Made contact, but the header was round the back of the goal. And a whip on the free kick. And there's a mark the man at the back. Hughes. Giggs. I won't make that. And Lukic doesn't need to. Just a sign of a little pull there, perhaps, for uh, Cantona. Leads to make a second substitution. And coming off is David Weatherall. And coming on is Noel Whelan. Goes into a forward position. So, defender off for an attacker. This Fairclough has dropped into the back four. Might give a bit more room for Cantona, but worth the gamble, of course. Dean taken by McAllister! Still! Good save by Schmeichel with his feet, but there was a handball on the way in. Free kick to Manchester United. And he did well, Peter Schmeichel, uh, Peter Schmeichel, to get there with his feet. It was an awkward bouncing ball, and the referee spotted the handball. That was chest. That was a handball. Bruce got back to a little bit of it, and Schmeichel coming for lock with his body as he came feet first. to uh, the central role. Wallace. Use for Whelan. Good header by Paul Parker. You can often make a point about Paul Parker not being the tallest. And it's not often that he gets beaten in a position like that. Trying to take, wants someone to come short. Speed trying to lose his marker is Hughes, and Michael makes it look very easy. There was a hint of a smile there too. Counter that. Boos now a little half-hearted. Keane. goes over that side, free kick given for the challenge by McAllister. There's a 
lunge which stopped the crossfield run the ball had already gone away Giggs well the expressions were an adequate summary of that goal and the smiles now as Manchester United know for sure that they have the three points <laughs> and the little routine between Giggs and Ince lovely return by Hughes and Giggs there ahead of Kelly and Manchester United lead by two to nothing beautifully away from Kelly return ball was precise and the goalkeeper going down perhaps helped a little bit but Giggs well worth the goal with that move Giggs Cantona Marker and Cantona looking to see where the goalkeeper is <laughs> would have been quite delicious Everything was against him. Look at that little look up. I'll try it. Down to Hughes. Remember his clearance. again then Pallister from Dean Chelskis keeps it in no he doesn't of a consolation for Leeds United if he looks at the watch again Canister goes to take the corner Newsom far angle calling for it and coming in and getting the header met by Pallister subtle ball in by Newsom could have a crack here, it will sit. It didn't. One more look at the watch. Nod from both linesmen. And that is the end. And the book precious little relation to the rather lurid cover comfortable victory with Hughes making the telling passes first to Kanchelskis in the 48th minute secondly the return ball to Ryan Giggs in the 85th it was said that this would be the most difficult match for Manchester United in the run into returning their title it proved to be nothing of the sort final score for Alec Ferguson's team is a 2-0 victory. Well, I thought it was a marvellous performance. I think that, given the circumstances of coming here, the time of year we've come with uh, four games left, I think it's probably our best performance away from home. And we've had some marvellous performances, but 
as I said, the circumstances uh, make it, to me anyway, probably the best performance. Actually, you quietened the intensity pretty early on, didn't you? Well, we said if we're going to win the league, then we've got to do it our own way. Not coming to scramble a point or go and try and win the match and be positive about it. And I think they did that well. On the other hand, you, you, you paced yourselves to the game. You didn't go off chasing it from the start. I mean, it was quite a slow <coughs> pace for, for Premiership Yeah, players. Yeah, I think so. I think, I think the pitch was a bit difficult. And players are trying to size up how difficult it is. And I think for the Leeds players, it must have been difficult for them because they're the home side and have to make the running. And they're playing it all the time. I know because of two years ago when our pitch was bad and it was, the players don't look forward to playing on it, you know. So the way team have a, a slight advantage so long as they're positive. And I think that was a key to it for us tonight. Alan Hansen with us. That was some gritty display by Manchester tonight. Yeah, I don't like agreeing with Alex, but he was right. It was a marvellous <laughs> performance. He's noticed that. Yeah. <laughs> they were terrific. They've gone away from home. Leeds have got a great home record. I thought it was a team performance. They were more solid than I've seen them in recent weeks. You know, they battled hard. They gave nothing away. And there's some excellent performers, a very, very good team performance. Mm. Who stood out for you? Well, that man, Mark Hughes, I thought he was terrific from start to finish. He, he plays up there on his own. He hustled defenders, he harried them. He chased lost causes. He was after people all the match. And when it got played up to him, he held up superbly and played people in all night. And, of course, he made the two goals. Mm -hmm. He was terrific. He wins a header here. We see him number 10. Now watch him. He's a Manchester United player that's going to chase first to McAllister. And again, that's the second challenge. There's the third challenge. You know, and that's what you're looking for. Again, he chases back here and wins the challenge, and Keane goes in the attack. And he did that all night. Bruce gets it here. It's a great ball in. But look at the first touch. Magnificent. Round the corner to Inns. And Manchester United are on the attack. I love this. It comes a million miles up in the air from Schmeichel. Look at the Fantastic. first touch again. Fantastic. And puts Keane away. But this is what he does so well. He looks for Parker here, plays it back to him. Now watch this. He's available again in his strength there, takes it on. He's aggressive, and Weatherall's forced to bring him down in a dangerous position. He gets a little break of the ball here because he doesn't really mean that, but he's totally unselfish, plays it back, and can Chelsea's first time it's in the back of the net. And as I say, a totally marvellous performance. You've played against him many times. He's a real handful, I take it. He's difficult to play against because he's very genuine. He'll keep going for you and keep going for you. He's so strong when it's played up to him, you've either got to get in front of him are back off and Leeds didn't do that. I felt that they didn't get tight enough on him. Sometimes you've got to try and get your foot around the corner and get a touch, but he's so strong backing into you. And of course, his first touch is magnificent and he brings it down and then plays people in. He doesn't get bags of goals in the way that a share or a right does, but um, he they're gets always enough. sensational, aren't they? I mean, mm. the goal against Oldham, the cup, that's typical of Hughes. He doesn't score them from two inches. He's a great player for Manchester United. Thanks for the moment, Alan. Of course, we've got the Blackburn match coming up for you in a moment. But meantime, let's give you the other results. Uh, first in the Premiership, Chelsea 2, Swindon 0, Newcastle 5, Aston Villa 1, Queen's Park Rangers 1, Arsenal 1. And we'll have all those goals for you as well. Now, in Division 1, Derby 0, Nottingham Forest 2. Goals by Colin Cooper and Steve Stone earning Forest the points as they move closer to automatic promotion. And West Brom 2, Birmingham City 4. Steve Claridge with two for Birmingham after Albion had scored first. Forrest can secure promotion on Saturday by winning at Peterborough. Crystal Palace already up, of course. Uh, both sides were relegated from the Premier League last season, you might recall. And tonight's win lifts Birmingham out of the relegation zone and leaves West Brom second bottom. Peterborough already relegated. Scottish Premier now. Celtic won, St Johnston won and Hearts won, Aberdeen won. Aberdeen and Celtic stay third and fourth respectively. Rangers, of course, are clear leaders, as you're about to see. Perhaps you're not. And St. Johnston and Hearts are still battling to avoid relegation despite uh, both drawing tonight. Anyway, Scottish Division 1, Hamilton nil, Sterling 1. And in the European Cup semi-finals, AC Milan 3, Monaco nil. Milan played the second half with only 10 men after the sending off of their defender, Costa Curta. Barcelona 3, Porto 0. Barcelona, European Cup winners just two years ago, proving too strong for Bobby Robson's team. And the final between Milan and Barcelona will be held in Athens on May the 18th, and it's a match you can see live here on BBC One. Now back to the championship race, and Blackburn looked more or less out of it at the weekend after dropping two points at home to QPR. Tonight, they face West Ham, who back in September won 2-0 at Ewood Park. The Hammers then looking for a double over the championship contenders. Clive Tilsley at Upton Park. 
Sunday's disappointing draw with Queen's Park Rangers certainly left its scars on Blackburn Rovers. David Batty, Mike Newell and Paul Warhurst all aggravated injuries which have ruled them out tonight and probably beyond. So Kenny Dalgleish still without Kevin Gallagher too has had to mix and match a bit in piecing together this side. Alan Wright hasn't started a senior game for five months. Mark Atkins hasn't figured since the end of February. Wright, a full-back, will play in midfield. Stuart Ripley, a winger, will play up front. West Ham have had their injury problems too, though. David Burrows, a championship winner with Kenny Dalglish at Liverpool, misses the reunion because of knee trouble. Kenny Brown deputises. Trevor Morley is the lone ranger in front of a five-man midfield. Terry Holbrook is the man in charge. Blackburn Rovers can make history tonight. They've never before qualified to play in Europe. One point from this game would guarantee at least runners-up spot and at least a place in the UEFA Cup. But they've still got their eyes on the star prize. Make no mistake about it. Here's Graham Lasso. Held up on that far side by Matthew Rush, who's made quite an impact on his return to West Ham in the last month. Blackburn were only one point shy of European qualification a year ago. Two years ago, they were scrambling to get into the promotion playoffs. You can only wonder just how strong they'll be by this time next year, uh, that rate of progress. Stuart Ripley, who's Alan Shearer's strike partner tonight. Challenged by Ian Bishop. Never before managed a team in European competition. He took charge of Liverpool in the immediate wake of the Heisel tragedy, and he was gone before Liverpool were readmitted. has got support from Allen and from Rush and Hendry able to recover Owen Flowers has lost it and eventually picks it up and neither referee nor linesman feel they saw a back pass I don't think there was anything very considered about Blackburn's defending there Colin Hendry cut it out he was certainly trying to clear it and there's no way that Burke was trying to turn it back to Flowers although he didn't take a chance first time and couldn't take a chance second time, had to grab it. I think that's the correct interpretation of the law. Atkins, on to Lasso. Plenty of support here. Cross deflected, and awkwardly too. Came off Tony Gale who allows himself a wry smile. Not sure McClosco was smiling when uh, the ball ricocheted and started to balloon towards his goal. Headed by Morley. Alan only as far as Sherwood. This is Wilcox. It goes Burke! And Blackburn in front! Heading Burke's first ever goal for Blackburn. Oh, they're not giving it up yet. 11 minutes gone and a perfect tonic for the championship pursuers. Henning Berg, the Norwegian World Cup player, just stealing in ahead of his marker on the near post and glancing his first ever goal in English football beyond Ludek McCloskey. Here's Tim Sherwood, the skipper again. On towards Jason Wilcox this time. Oh. Well, the Blackburn fans at the other end thought it was in. It was in the side netting. Played in by Tim Sherwood. And Wilcox, who's been popping girls in during the last couple of months, hit it first time and not too far off the mark. Here's Morley. Held off Hendry. Good recovery by the centre-half, big handball appeal. Matt Holmes, way by Henningberg. Trevor Morley was pretty adamant, he saw something untoward. This is Kenny Brown. And neither Rush nor Lasso could make contact, and Rush has been penalised. 
as Morley continues to rage at the linesman over what he felt should have been a West Ham penalty award. So when Hendry fell to the ground that uh, I think Morley felt he used the arm. There, certainly his hand made contact with the ball. How much intent there was is another matter. Kenny Brown, Ian Bishop, Mike Marsh. Bishop in towards Rush, it's awkward, Lasso couldn't deal with it. Flowers decided not to risk the hands that time. Gale. Marsh. Bishop, lovely angled pass, the last one in towards Rush. Gale couldn't quite match him, but Bishop has it back. Rush. Headed by Atkins. Allen. Referee fighting in Morley's favour this time against David May. Spell of concerted West Ham pressure. Plenty of candidates to take the free kick. It's Marsh. And it's a comfortable take for Tim Flowers. Bishop. Marsh, Gale, that's where Brown had just come from, able to recover, Allen, Morley did well, Allen, Holmes, May got a foot in, Brown, Morley! They have played some delightful football tonight West Ham. The end product has been missing so far, but that was uh, an effective cross. I'm not sure that Matthew Rush wasn't better placed than Trevor Morley in actual fact. Holmes. Marsh. Rush. It was a rather tentative finish. Mike Marsh giving Colin Hendry the slip. But Matthew Rush unable to profit. Yet another message here. This is for Alex Dawson. But Alex Dawson please Came from behind Lasso. Maybe Rush Alex saw it late, but it was a weak Alex effort, really. Um, Blackburn Rovers have been stubborn and determined throughout this first half. They've had one or two scares to survive. <laughs> to West Ham United, the possession and the pressure. To Blackman Rovers, the only goal of the first half, scored by the only man on the field whose World Cup finals bound in the summer, Henningberg. Blackburn have been resilient and will finish the first half in a happier mood than they started it. A goal up. Given that Blackburn are maybe in need of something a little out of the ordinary now, it's uh, perhaps worth recording that their last victory on this ground, Boxing Day 1963, was by eight goals to two. It's actually uh, West Ham United's heaviest ever defeat. And the great Bobby Moore was in their defence that day. And judging by the scoreline, he was their defence that day. Now, 30 odd years on, we have a different kind of game altogether. Blackburn doing a, a thorough repair job after their misfire at the weekend. Here's Jason Wilcox. Brought down by Matthew Rush. Blackburn have looked particularly dangerous from these uh, set pieces around the West Ham penalty area, May, Berg and Hendry all forward on a return ticket from the back. Oh, oh. 
Headed away by Morley, deep in defence. Right, Bishop has won it. Holmes. Challenge from behind was from Lasso, and it wasn't too pleasant. Terry Holbrook already reaching for a card. It's a yellow card. Blackburn didn't have a lot of men committed downfield. I don't know if Lasso felt he could just steal it, but that's very painful on the uh, back of the left leg. Attacking the ball and winning it. Ripley, Atkins. Ripley here has got beyond Brown. Held up by Gale at the expense of the corner. Again, strong and powerful work by Stuart Ripley. David May, heading Byrne, good save. Well, he hadn't scored all season until tonight. He almost doubled his money there. Ludet McClosko to the rescue for West Ham. Another from Berg at that stage would have been hard for West Ham to bear. Kenny Brown. Sherwood. Good challenge by Potts. Like a foul on Bishop by Shearer. Break up. Sport hadn't quite arrived, but Berg has handed it here to Holmes. Blocked by May. Allen wasn't far away by a man who scored in his last two games for West Ham United. Made space for himself very skillfully there, Martin Allen. Didn't force Tim Flowers into a save. Certainly heading Berg stretched Flowers opposite number Ludette McCloskey a moment or so ago. From May's touch on, Berg almost scored again. West Ham United ready to uh, beef up the pursuit of an equaliser. Matthew Rush will be replaced by Lee Chapman, who was dropped from the starting lineup at the start of the month. Made a scoring debut, of course, at Blackburn seven months ago. And Trevor Morley here has a strike partner. He also has a free kick. starters orders it'll be Marsh to break up and they've got another free kick because Shearer trips break up West Ham inching forward didn't quite get the last one right see what plan B is Martin Allen oh and plan B has worked a treat Martin Allen equalises Tim Flowers concedes a goal that Blackman Rovers could not afford to concede and Martin Allen has scored in three goal three games in a row since his recall to the side and is he happy
He just smashed it. And it was deflected. That's why Flowers never moved. Shearer. Atkins. Oh, hit the post. And the margins between winning and almost winning a championship are so fine. Blackburn aren't finished, though. In goes Berg. Volley from Wilcox, just kept out by McCloskey. What a reply from Blackburn Rovers. Wilcox in, Allen away. Alan Wright, Graham the soap. Mark Atkins, who's been with Blackburn nearly six years. And he cost them £45,000 in the days when £45,000 was a lot of money to Blackburn. But he's uh, figured in the big changes here and he almost made a very big contribution then. Chapman on to Holmes. Morley. Marsh. Well held by Flowers. Blackman Rovers are ready to make a change, and a sizeable change too. One of the smallest men in the game, five feet four inches of Alan Wright, being replaced by one of the tallest young players around, six feet two inches of Ian Pearce. Flowers finding Ripley. Bishop, Holmes, Morley, Brown, Bishop, Morley, Brown, Holmes, Morley, Bishop, well, maybe one or two passes too many, Alan Shearer, Ian Pierce is playing up front and here he is, Taking Shearer's pass in his stride. Oh! Now that's what you call a dramatic substitution. Ian Pierce, 19 years of age, a centre half, brought on as a centre forward, and scoring a goal for Kenny Dalgleish, which keeps his interest in the championship alive and well. He's been on the field two minutes and he only needed two touches, one to control it and one to finish. The Blackburn girls really have come from unlikely sources tonight. Henning Berg's first for the club and Ian Pierce's first in the Premiership. Breaker. Three Blackburn defenders shutting out the light. Lasso keeping the ball in play. Stoppage time. Blackburn won't take their foot off the accelerator. They lost a late goal, costly goal to Queen's Park Rangers last weekend. has been there for all to see tonight. No surrender and no doubting Blackburn's bottle. A match they had to win with an inspired substitution from Kenny Dalgleish. Ian Pearce coming on and scoring within two minutes. A winning goal 15 minutes from the end. Following on from... 
an equaliser from Martin Allen and an unlikely opener from Hedingberg. Blackburn still in need of a little help from their friends, but even if they stop short of the very summit this season, the Blackburn flag will be flying in Europe for the very first time next season. And in that sense, it's been a night of real achievement for Kenny Dalglish's team. Final score, West Ham 1, Blackburn 2. Kenny, I think congratulations are in order. Qualifying for Europe. I thought the wife was pregnant in that place. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, just, it's a reflection and it's uh, on what the lads have done off-season and worked tremendously hard. They've got there and met it. Um, it's no more than they deserve and they've been uh, magnificent. And I think really that's uh, it's only right and just that they've, that they've got themselves in Europe. They've got 83 points now, which in a lot of years would have been enough to win the title. But unfortunately this year it isn't, so we'll keep plodding on and hope to add to that. Toughest job in our business, interviewing Kenny after the match, as I'm, usual. But, I don't uh, think she'll be looking for trial number five somehow. <laughs> well, the championship's not over yet. No, a tremendous show of character by Blackburn, you know, after dropping two points against QPR on Sunday. Mm. To come back and win there, they could have laid down, but they've gone there and they've showed grit and determination. That it really, again, it wasn't a vintage performance, but you're not going to get that at this stage of the season. And they've come up getting three points, which was vital and important. They were under the cosh for a good bit of that match. They've got a very solid defence. Henry was back, obviously, and away from home, they've, they've missed him against Wimbledon and Southampton. He was back, he was dominant. He's got a great partnership with David May, and they look very, very solid. Now, the boy Dalglish can make a substitution. There. He will tell you that anyway, that's mm. for sure. But it was a good substitution. And this is like Mark Hughes' great first touch from Shearer coming out there, and that's a fantastic pass on to Ian Pierce. Great first touch. Well, that's got to be a pass back, isn't it? Tell me it's a pass back. Because, I mean, you don't think it was a great shot? No. I, I think McCloskey should have got that, should have saved it. But great for Ian Pierce to come on. He showed great composure with the first touch, but I thought the goalkeeper should have had that. Shall we look at the top of the table just to underline exactly what the situation is? Manchester United, if they get four points from their remaining three games, will be champions, uh, no matter what Blackburn do. And uh, indeed, they'll be confirmed champions next Monday if they beat Ipswich on Sunday and Blackburn fail to beat Coventry 24 hours later. So it looks like United, doesn't it? I mean, you'd have to put your money on yeah, them now Yeah, they've got three short. games left. They've got to lose two for Blackburn to win. They've got the two games at home, one away. You just can't see it happening. I think Manchester United are going to win the Premiership. OK. Well, now the rest of the night's Premiership goes. But first, last night's performance by the most informed team in the Premiership. Before the FA Cup semi-final, Oldham's form and games in hand were such that they seemed quite capable of climbing away from the bottom three. But a third straight defeat at Wimbledon has further tarnished that optimism. Dean Holdsworth scored the opener after 32 minutes, his 20th of the season. Wimbledon's John Fashionew had time to incur the wrath of Joe Royal for a challenge on Richard Jobson before being substituted at half-time. Holdsworth's second goal two minutes after the break showed his striking partner wasn't going to be missed. His hat-trick and Oldham's defeat were complete eight minutes later. Holdsworth's first league trouble for Wimbledon, who moved into sixth. Oldham stays second from bottom. Four tough games in eight days will decide their fate. Arsenal are competing with Newcastle for third, but their path to Europe could be opened up by winning the Cup Winners' Cup a week tonight. When Gary Penrice put QPR ahead after only three minutes, victory in the final and not third place seemed Arsenal's likeliest passport. That's how it stayed until a minute into the second half, when Paul Merson, back after a four-game absence through tonsillitis, produced one of those memorable goals that so often illuminate his game. He'd lost half a stone through the illness, but none of his power in front of goal. Arsenal now unbeaten in 19 Premiership matches. Two teams playing out time at Stamford Bridge. Chelsea eagerly awaiting the FA Cup final, Swindon already relegated. The home side went ahead from a 25th minute penalty after Luke Nyholt was adjudged to have pushed Gavin Peacock. Dennis Wise was typically assured with the kick, 1-0 for Chelsea. And they deservedly sealed victory six minutes before half-time. Eddie Newton and John Spencer heavily involved in the move, which led up to Gavin Peacock slotting home his eighth goal of the season. A cup final worry for Chelsea, though, when Spencer went off with a leg injury.
Newcastle just ahead of Arsenal in third, hoping that'll be enough for a place in Europe. But there was an unwelcome continental flavour for them after just 10 minutes when German Stefan Beinlich gave Villa the lead. It took Newcastle only five minutes to draw level. Paul Bracewell, not renowned for his goal-scoring feats from midfield, hit one he'll remember for many a day. Midway through the half, Newcastle's European quest was back on course. Steve Staunton brought down Peter Beardsley. Penalty. Beardsley fired home his 22nd goal of the season, the 10th penalty scored by Newcastle this campaign, a club record. But the record the home fans really wanted to see came four minutes before half-time. Andy Cole's 40th goal of the season, breaking the club's individual scoring record. Villa's Sean Teal was carried off injured early in the second half. Soon after, Beardsley had his second, a superb way to mark his 600th league and cup appearance. And 11 minutes from time, a fifth for Kevin Keegan's side, Beardsley setting up Scott Sellers at the far post. 5-1, Europe would be all the richer with the inclusion of Newcastle in this form. Well, they've had a great season. Phil Jones reporting on the night's football there. Well, some sad boxing news today, and uh, it involves Bradley Stone, who's critically ill in hospital following his defeat in last night's British Super Bantamweight title fight with Richie Wenton at the York Hall Bethnal Green. The East London had collapsed after the fight, and he was operated on at the Royal London Hospital. The British Boxing Board of Control Secretary, John Morris, said all safety procedures had been followed before and after the fight. I think it rather puts a question mark over the sport of boxing, those sort of incidents. Now, in recent years, there's been a set formula for the Rugby League Challenge Cup final. Wigan win it, the other team turns up. Wigan have won the last six finals. In four of them, Ellery Hanley played a starring role. Well, now Hanley plays for Leeds, who stand in the way of a seventh win for Wigan at Wembley on Saturday. The Leeds captain is regarded as one of the greatest talents to have ever played rugby league. But he's human and is hoping a hamstring injury won't keep him out of Saturday's match. For sure, he's an inspirational leader and a winner. Six years at Wigan washed up trophies galore, and that included four Challenge Cup successes. Before his retirement from international rugby, he led Great Britain by example. He's been awarded the OBE, and on three occasions he's been Rugby League's Player of the Year. Now, 33, he's been in top form this season and has led his hometown club to their first Challenge Cup final for 16 years. He's had his brushes with authority, he hardly ever speaks publicly, but the term local hero fits perfectly. From when the Hooter went, when we played St Helens at Central Park some weeks ago, you could feel the vibration, and from the spectators, the whole town, there was a huge fever in the town, it just meant so much, and a thrill, not just because, I think, Leeds hadn't been there in 16 years or whatever, but it was the fact that I think there was a ring about it, Wigan versus Leeds. You know some of those Wigan players inside out, don't you? Absolutely. You know, I've, uh, some of them are my great friends, as Sean Edwards and Dennis Betts and so forth. They, they, you know, they, they're not just rugby league players, they're actually my friends off the field as well. You'll be very focused for the game, but will you banter with the Wigan players? Will there be a few jokes or will it be serious business? You won't crack on to Sean Edwards or...? No, there'll be no... Um, the only time I'll be speaking to Sean Edwards will probably be after the final, who to goes, and, um, and once we, we all become friends again. But while the 80 minutes is rolling, it's pure war. What is Ellery Hanley like away from the rugby ground? I'm just the run of the mill and a regular guy and uh, not aloof to what everybody uh, thinks about Ellery Hanley. So it, it's a myth really about people saying, yeah, Ellery doesn't speak and he's rude and um, he's arrogant and so forth. People don't know me and the thing about it is, if that's the way they want to feel about me, well, that's fair and well. But as far as I'm concerned, I know that I have a job to do and I always like to do it to the best of my ability. And I feel that I always get satisfaction by the concentration factor. Why did you decide to remain silent for a lot of your career? Well, Raymond, I believe that every individual deserves privacy, no matter whether they think that the top of the scale or the bottom of the scale. I believe that intrusion into someone's life is not good. I've had photographers and journalists around at my house, snooping around the garden and so forth, and I've never been able to ever accept that or put up with that, and I don't think any person should. 
whether you're a sportsman or whether you're the Joe Bloggs in the street, I don't think anybody should have to put up with that. And I've had to suffer that for a number of years and I've decided, well, okay then, if that's the case then and journalists and the media want to treat me like that then I will just forget about them, be silent and just go about, just go about my business as far as playing rugby league is concerned. He's still going, Ellery Hanley. Oh, he's still going! And he's still going! Goodness gracious me, this could be the time of the season! And do you think back about great performances? No, because my life is so busy, I don't really have time, Raymond, to look back and dwell on the past and think to myself, yes, I achieved that and so forth. Maybe when I've finished and um, eventually I have kids and so forth, I may look back at the memories and and the fortunate position I've been in in, fa in in the situation of being playing with some great players, which has been a great help to my aspect of play. How important was it, Ellery, to captain your country? Because you won 13 of the 19 tests, you captained Great Britain. That was magnificent. It, it was um, another feather in my cap, you could say. But um, I felt that, once again, out of the games I won and the games I played, I was just part of a team. The players tell me that you retired too soon. Well, I, I always believe, Raymond, that if you feel you've come to the end of the road and you feel that you've achieved everything you wanted to achieve, um, and in such a very physical, high-contact sport as rugby league, I feel that you should realise and know within yourself and know your limitations and know when to retire and hold your boots up. I felt that it was time I called it a day and I felt that I achieved um, the things I wanted to, apart from the fact that we never won a test series against Australia. That was one of my saddest things, one of my disappointments, but um, in life you can't have everything. Ellery Hanley! Surely that now is Wembley beckoning for Leeds! A lot of people will look at you and think, I want to achieve what that man has achieved. Does that carry a responsibility? Yeah, it does, and... Um, as I've got older, um, we've all made mistakes in life, but I think that as I've got older, I've always liked to think to myself, well, I like to be trying to do everything with perfection and try not to do too many mistakes or any at all. But, you know, sometimes you're going to do mistakes and you've got to learn from your mistakes and you've got to listen to other people as well. The referee's going to be real edgy as well. You've got to make sure... How important is the coaching aspect?